everyone. Welcome back to Synergy and Multifamily. My name is Jahira here with Blackbridge Capital Partners. Today we have Sergio Aguilar from JTS Funds and the Cash Flow Empire Show, which you co-host with your is he your best friend? He's Jonathan? my partner. Yeah, he's my partner that turned into family. So okay. we, skip, we skip that step of of of, of friendship and went straight into family okay that's amazing did you guys meet through real estate is that we how you did. guys met we did we met three years ago at a 10x event um in miami florida and, and um, at the time he was from miami and i was from dallas now he lives in dallas <laughs> that's how the world turns right right um, it's crazy well, I'm going to go ahead and let Eric start off, start us off. So Eric, whenever you want. Yeah. And like I said, I mentioned again, Sergio, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, it's been quite some time that I've been wanting to speak with you just because we do share very similar backgrounds. Um, I'm Guatemalan myself, first American, um, first American, first generation here. And nice. I know that you uh, take pride in uh, being a first, uh, first generation Mexican American. So just wanted okay. to connect with you and um, and talk more about your history, man, how you ended up, you know, from the beginning into into diving into multifamily. So feel free to give yourself an introduction and uh, we'll go from there. For sure. Yeah, man. And thank you guys. Once again, it means a lot for me to be here uh, right now with y'all. I, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do anything else right now. So thank y'all for having me and for inviting me. It means a lot to me. Um, believe me, I just I just love these doing these things and just trying to really get out there as much and, and just share with you guys the knowledge, uh, the experience. I don't know it all, but, you know, um, you know, we, we can all learn from each other's mistakes, lessons and experiences, right? That's my big little, um, that's my little, um, how should I say it? That's just something I really take pride in and in, in my philosophy, right? So I am a first generation Mexican American. My parents are from Mexico. They're from San Luis Potosí, Mexico. Um, I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas, so um, it's kind of weird just because uh, you're kind of from here, you're from there, you kind of, you, you don't know what you are, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a, I am an American, but um, I do take pride in, in just being that first generation American uh, and just trying to pave that way for my people for, and then just not just my people, but for anybody just to really, you know, let them know that what we're doing here in real estate is very, very much possible. Anybody can do it, uh, no matter your age, no matter your race, no matter what, you know, every, anything and everything. This is possible and you can scale extremely fast in a matter of sh such a short amount of time by doing the right things and partnering up with the right people. So um, that's a little bit about myself. Um, I, I started in the construction industry. I was born and raised in the construction industry, right? So um, ever since I was a kid, you know, um, I would go to job sites with my dad and and I just, just, that's what I wanted to do. I, I knew I was going to be on the field coordinating, you know, and, and just, you know, I just felt, I fell in love with it at such, such a young age. Right. And um, I fell in love with it so much that I got my bachelor's degree in construction management. I swore up and down that I was going to run my dad's company one day with my older brother, my older sister. And, uh, something that we've always planned and we've always talked about our whole lives. We had this big illusion. I always pictured myself pulling up to the job sites in a big truck, well-dressed up, um, especially after, you know, I, I labored. When I labored at such a young age, I was like, I would get jealous. I was like, man, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to be that guy one day. I'm going to be that guy one day. That's going to pull up to my job sites. I'm all dirty and I'm hot. I'm overheating. I'm getting dark, I'm burnt, you know, and, and it sucked, but it was very humbling, you know, and, um, you know, lo and behold, I, I made it happen. I finally, when I went to college, I got experience in the field, which I wouldn't trade that for the world. It taught me how to just really appreciate the, the American dream. It just allowed me to appreciate that, wow, you know, I am an American, like, um, you know, shit, it could be worse, right? Uh, you know, there, I could have not, I could not have papers or, or or be a citizen and not have this opportunity. So it humbled me being on the field a lot, guys. And uh, once I got my bachelor's degree, the rest was history. I got hired by the best general contractor in the state of Texas, um, and I'm in downtown Dallas. You know, doing renovation projects, uh, mid rises and high rises, structural interior finish outs, and um, that's what I thought I was going to do, man. And when I started corporate America. You know, the whole the whole 
ideal was for me to get experience in corporate America and then take over dad's company, right, with my brother. Um, but when I was in corporate America and I was like, wow, this, this sucks. Like, I was 26 years old at the time. I was like, is this what life is going to be? You know, is this what it's like? I, I just, I don't want to do it. You know, so when I eventually left and went to my dad's company with my siblings, um, I got a taste of entrepreneurship and, you know, I didn't know anything. I mean, I was 26, 27, I was 27. No, I was 26. I graduated college when I was 25. So I went back with my dad when I was like 26, getting into 27. Um, and I really just, you know, I I got a taste of entrepreneurship. I, I lost $1.5 million dollars. Uh, me and my brothers didn't know what we were doing. We had this whole illusion of blowing the company up. We were motivated. We were ready. We were young. We were green. You know, we were taking all these jobs left and right, um, not really calculating risk, right? And we we learned, right? We learned. Uh, here I am at 28 years old. I've lost $1.5 million. And, you know, it was a big lesson that I've learned in my life on how to be an entrepreneur by making the biggest mistakes that we could, right? Um, so that's a little bit about myself in a nutshell on the construction, you know, just where I, where I was born, how I transitioned into construction in general. And here we are doing real estate, right? 100% man. Thank, thank you for that. That was a, that was a beautiful deep dive. And I'm curious so, to rewind it back to what you said in the beginning that you fell in love with construction. And, you know, I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. Did you fall in love sure. with the sort of work ethic that, that happens on the construction sites that you, that you sort of grew up seeing? Um, cause I know that even in, even within the construction field, just your partners or just your, your, your workmates, right. There's a certain level of respect that comes with this, with this trade. So I'm wondering what exactly it was that you fell in love with about construction. I, and I fell in love with the before and after, you know, I fell in love with, okay, here are a set of plans and I'm looking at them. And I remember my dad would have, them. Like, what are you even looking at? Like, I don't know anything. You know, and and I, I fell in love with seeing something on paper and it coming to life. That was that's when I fell in love with like, okay, these are the dimensions of a slab, right? It says 18 feet by 30, let's just say, right? And then I'd go and I would actually measure an 18 foot by 30 foot slab or a form. And then I would see the process of it come together. You know, I'm very I'm I'm, I'm an ADD individual. I'm very hyper, I'm very extroverted. I like, I cannot be still. So I, I just fell in love being out on the field, being in the mix. What's going on? What are we doing? How are we going to get this done today? How far are we going to get today? So going back to your question, it's just, that's what I fell in love with, man. And the work ethic, I mean, I, I learned how to work hard at a very young age. I was, you know, just like all of us, all our immigrant parents, man, they work hard. That's all they know, right? So I took pride in that. I took, I took pride in being brown. I'm like, man, I'm brown. I got to work hard. You know, that's me. That's what we do. So I, I learned that. I saw that. I, I wanted to do that. Man, that's a hardworking person. I saw my dad work. I mean, he, he worked our whole lives. And, and for, unfortunately, he taught me how to work hard. Unfortunately, because he worked so hard, I never, we didn't experience anything. We didn't go out. There was no vacations. I, I've never been on a family vacation with my family growing up. I don't know what it's like to go to Disney World. I don't know what it's like to go to Six Flags. You know, I don't know any of that because we didn't do it. And when I would cry, I remember I would tell my dad, hey, like, look, I, I see all these roller coasters. I'm like, I want to go there. Let's go there. And he would always say, no, there ain't no time. There ain't no time. I ain't got no time. It was, it was always an excuse. I ain't got no time. I got to work. I got to work. So I grew up hearing that. So I was like, I got to work. Okay. So I, it kind of just drilled into me, traumatized me in the sense like, I got to work. I got to work. I got to make ends meet. So um, I, I kind of fell in love with all of that, man. And, Think that's what's molded me into the individual that I am today. Wouldn't trade it for the world either. But I know what I'm not going to give my kids. You know, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now, because I want to do the opposite of that. That was really amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that we all experience that to some extent, right? As first generation Americans, our parents really had to work hard. And so we didn't get to have the Disney World trips, the, the vacations away. Um, and if you were going on vacation, you were probably going back home, right? Like back to the country. And that was like your vacation, but really it was, they wanted to reconnect with family. So just to kind of ask you more about family and, and your culture, how was it growing up as a Mexican American for you, especially down in Texas? It was, uh, 
believe it or not, just because I'm in Texas, you would have feel you would have you would have figured we're more diverse down here, right? Or there's highly populated Hispanics. Um, I mean, it it was it was a little tough. It's just kind of because because kind of like how you mentioned, you know, they, they go back to see my you know family. My dad can't go back to Mexico. He he goes. He's screwed. He can't come back. My mom, on the other hand, she can, right? But when I was growing up, my first my first language was Spanish. That's that's the first thing I learned, right? My parents are, I mean, I don't I don't know English. I didn't learn English until I went to school, and you know, based on the memory that I recall, I mean, I, I learned it in school, and here I am bilingual, right? But it was very hard because, you know, you're here and you know, you're a minority, but you go over there and you're from over here. So being in the you're in the middle, you're just kind of like, well, where do I really belong? You know, I'm, I'm, you know, it's kind of hard to get accepted here sometimes, certain situations, but then I go to Mexico and you're like, oh, you're, you're a Chicano, you're from the other side. I'm just like, well, yeah, I am, but I'm brown, bro. I'm a Mexican. Like, well, what you, like uh, we're the same, you know, in, in a sense, but um, it, it was tough. It's tough, especially uh, trying to learn English, trying to, you know, uh, um, just not sound like I'm not from here. You know, and this is why I speak the way I speak. A lot of people make fun of the way I speak. They're like, why? Like, I remember in high school, my ex-girlfriend was like, why do you say every syllable? I was like, you want to know why? She's like, yeah. I'm like, that's what I taught myself as a kid. I learned how to say every syllable because I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to sound like an idiot. I didn't want to sound like I was that, you know, I was not American enough. You know, I wanted to fit in and, and I learned how to read and I'm not reading and I'm learning how to speak like how an American is supposed to, right? So um, I didn't want to get made fun of, simple as that. So if you hear me talk, you'll see, you'll hear me kind of almost say every single word in the word, and that's just how I want to talk. So it's kind of funny. It's extremely hard growing up as, kind of having two cultures, right? Because you are American, right. so you're American, but you're also from wherever you come from. And I can relate on that where I spoke Spanish first up until I went to school. I've, I've shared this before. Um, I'll repeat it again. My dad basically told the teachers, like, it is your job to teach her English. So she does not know English. And it was hard because I then I went to ESL, but I was like, I don't belong in ESL. I understand everyone else. All right. And it was such a struggle back and forth. Um, even just growing up, your identity is almost like split. Uh, so to say that it is extremely hard um, because you don't really get fully accepted on either side. And it's so hard because yeah. you're just like, I am you, like I am you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in ESL till till ninth grade, so I got you. I feel you. I remember the first time me going to Guatemala. My mom still recalls like distant memories of me just speaking English to all my all my neighborhood, you know, friends, and they <laughs> not understanding a lick of English. Like, who is this kid? <laughs> I can definitely funny. I feel you on that, man. Um. You know, I'm I'm just also curious too, you know, what are, you know, going back to the construction and just your dad, you know, seeing your dad work tirelessly, you know, every day, every day, no vacations or anything. Um, what, what, since being in that from the very beginning, what are some misconceptions that people, you know, take or don't understand necessarily about the construction management industry? Um, Cause I can imagine you already sort of have those, those leadership skills coming from that world into the multifamily which is, you know, amazing to see the growth with the cash flow empire. You guys are are moving at such a, a quick and, and incredible pace, man. Um, I'm curious to see what what you think are some misconceptions about about that industry and how you sort of transitioned over into multifamily. I think a lot of people, and and I mean, I think it's it's a super important role. I'm not saying everybody that does construction management that has a degree or that does construction should get into multifamily. But I will say that it is an advantage on, on your team because um, I've, I've, I'm a part of a couple of deals. And, and one thing I've noticed right off the bat is that, you know, as an asset manager, it's kind of like a construction manager. But as you're managing, instead of a, the big, con it, it switches from construction manager to asset manager, right? So it's a really, really big, big role. It plays a really big part on really executing your 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 business plan. So to have an individual that knows how to manage bud budgets, that knows how to cut costs, that knows how to push and, and, and just, you know, push schedules and 
just manage manpower because that's where a lot of people tend to bleed, you know, on, on, you know, projects in construction, whether it's construction related or asset management, um, having somebody on your team that has that knowledge, super important. I think it's, you should have it. I mean, when you're vetting somebody that's asset management, I mean, it's just asking, okay, well, do you have any type of construction experience? Cause it's not really all construction, but it's really leadership. It's knowing how to really just overcome problems, how to pivot because nothing ever goes as planned, right? You know, and I say that because I'm going through that right now on one of our assets. You know, I'm, I'm up here having discussions with the contractor that we've been using. And I'm just like, dude, you know, you, you may not see it, but I'm looking at numbers, we're bleeding. You're, you're, you're bleeding over a day or two and I can't have it. You know, I brought someone else in today and, and somebody with more experience. And these are the decisions you have to make on early. Because, you know, without without that, you know, you're you're not able to make monthly distributions. We're making monthly distributions for our properties. Not a lot of people do that, but we are. Because we're able to stabilize in six months or less. Some people say, I'm going to stabilize in six months. But really, they take a little longer. I mean, I'm, I'm a part of deals where we're, they're taking longer. We haven't seen the dollar, you know, in my, in, in my entry level. And when I started the game, I, I mean, I'm up here investing with people, right? I need to get some skin in the game. But we're not even making a dollar yet. And it's already been over a year and a half, you know, and it's just a really, really big role on executing your business plan. And I mean, the misconception is it's serious. Like it's very, very that much serious. Have somebody on your team that has a lick of leadership or experience and instruction that knows how to crack the code on when are we bleeding? How are we bleeding? Where are the financials at? Are we hitting the deadlines? Because I even with my experience, I caught it and, and I'm managing this, right? But I caught it. The point is to catch it and to put a stop to it and make adjustments. ASAP. Because then it leads to not hitting stabilization in six months. Now you can't pay your investors when you said you were in nine months. Then it probably bleeds into Q2 of after closing. And then that's a really, really big problem. Now you become a liar. Now nobody wants to invest with you. Now they're like, Eric, what the hell, dude? You promised me this or that, right? And it, you got to have these conversations and it sucks, you know? So that's the misconception. I kind of went left field, but I hope, you know, you kind of got something from it. Yeah, no, 100%. And, you know, congratulations on the CASA as well. I've been following you guys' progress Jeez. on that too. And, you know, just the fact that you guys are able to turn that such around, you know, quickly to get those distributions to your investors, man, that, that says a lot about the group. You know, you guys yeah, care man. for the greater good of your investors. It's, that's why we're here, brother. I mean, it's it's not a selfish game. I mean, yes, we we get to win, right? We're general partners. We will win eventually. And when we win, it will be big. You know, we're talking million dollar, dis, you know, uh, not distributions, but you're talking about, you know, partner, you know, and you're within the partnership, you're, you're splitting millions and millions of dollars. Of course, you're going to win. You're bound to win. But I mean, we got to do, we got to do what's right at first. We got to take care of the asset. We got to execute. We got to put in all these hours without getting paid, right? Um, and, and I mean, I appreciate it though, man. Thank you for that love, man. No we take pride in that. <laughs> Amazing. And it's not easy to do. It's it's a very difficult position to be in because it is, I mean, it's a scale, right? Apartments are, it's not like a, a one home. Obviously yeah. they're all risk is different, but still it's, it could be a lot because you are responsible for not only the tenants, but for your investors. Um, right. So that I did want to kind of circle back to education. And I know that you had spoken about you, you went to college, right? You, Correct. you four years and that that's, I mean, for us, it's big, right? Because we're told oh, yeah. like college, um, but what role did education really pl like play in your career path? Right. And how important is it to you to continue to educate others? So that's a very cool, that's a very great question. Thank you for asking that. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, it took me five years and a half to get my bachelor's degree. Right. And till this day, till this day, I go back and I talk to the younger generation. I go to high schools till this day. And I talk to a lot of the students and I say, and I tell them one thing, you do not need to go to college to be successful. That's the first thing I tell them. Although I'm a college grad, I tell everybody that. Just because I went to college does not make me better. And you do not need to go to college to be successful. That's the number one thing I said. But if you really want to do that, by all means, 
pursue that career path that you really is that you really want to do. So education is just big to me because I'm a firm believer that whether you go to college or you do a trade, plumber, you know, HVAC technician, uh, whatever it is, master electrician, or you want to go do hair or or a lash tech, whatever it is that you want to do, learn something. I think it's super super important. Um, and it just really goes back down to educating yourself, investing in yourself, whether it's college, whether it's multifamily seminars, uh, whether it's anything. I think it's super, super important. And and kind of just following up with the second question, you know, how important is it to educate everybody else, right? I think that was your question, right? Yeah, I think it's super important. And that's why we do what we do Um which is why I love what y'all are doing right here is because you're trying to provide value, right? To your community, super important. I mean, it's just, you gotta let people know your experiences. You gotta let people know, hey, look, listen, I made this mistake. Don't do that, you know, go this route. Or you know what, this is what worked for me. Why don't you try this out? Super, super important to go back and just try to give and educate because even in multifamily, that's our goal. Our goal is to educate everybody. But well, what are you guys doing? Well, we're buying multifamily, how? You know, we do it through the syndication model. What's a syndication? Syndication is when you get together, you know, with family, friends, we get a pool of money and we take down these assets. You know, you can do this too. You can be a part of this. Are you interested? Yeah, let me know. Tell me more. Okay, well, look, we got this deal going on. And, you know, you, 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 know, you, you tell them what is it that you're doing and you're essentially educating. That's a really, really big part because, you know, especially us Hispanics and just the minority community in general, Hardworking blue collar class, let's just call it general, right? They don't know anything about this. All they know is 401k, dump my money in the form of work my whole life, 401k. Well, guess what? It's up to us to tell them, look, dude, you don't keep working as hard as you want. Take advantage of your IRA though, man. Throw it in an IRA, invest it in a deal. And, you know, you can double your money three to five years. Like, why not? Why, you know, you're not, your money's not... You're not making any money just sitting in the bank or just sitting in your 401k, guys. Like, come on, it's invested in real estate. This is what we do and this is how we do it. Guess what? Come meet my partner, Serge or Jahira, that's asset managing. And if you want to walk the property, we can always walk in when you want. You know what? I like that idea. Let's go. Where, where do I send the money? Right? That's why it's so important to educate people because a lot of us don't know what we don't. A lot of people don't know about multifamily investment. A lot of people are working so hard. Their whole they've been working their whole lives and they've been saving their money and, and their 401k. And they I mean, Lord knows that when they retire, you know, the market's well. I've, I've been watching stories of this ladies, like I've been saving money my whole life. The market crashed and I don't I don't have anything. Like it's gone. So that's yeah, imagine the, that. <laughs> no, th thank you, Pastor. And you know, just to rewind it back as well about sort of educating and you really don't know what you don't know, right? I want to bring it back to your partner, uh, Jonathan. You know, yeah. what what role has he played in, in your life as well? Um, I know you guys met at a, yeah, <laughs> it's a loaded question, so I'm curious. Um, that's a very great question. And I think if you're in this room and you're just kind of wondering what's my superpower, you know, what do I need to do or how do I start? Like, guys, if you're going to learn something from me today it is the power of leveraging other people's superpower, right? And partnering up with them. Me, I'm the construction guy. I'm the person that Jonathan's been missing. Jonathan is a numbers guy. He knows how to freaking take a deal apart. He'll take, you send him a deal, he'll take it apart. And he'll tell you, you know what? This is a great deal. This is a bad deal, whatever. I can't do that. I like numbers, but is it my superpower? Absolutely not. Me as a construction, I can sit here and go to your single family home and be like, yeah, you know, I can tell you everything and anything that's wrong and how we can fix it and what it's going to cost. That's what I'm great at. And I can get it done. And I can tell you when I'm going to do it and get it done probably before that for a cheaper price. But that is that is what how he, me and him are just great at balancing each other like that. You know, our just coming together, bringing our superpowers together and just as one I think we're just, we're killers, man. We're, we're, we're so, such a great unit, such a great team. Um, and I advise every single one of you guys to do that. If, you, if you're great at something, if you know you're great at talking to people, go find your numbers guy. If you're a numbers guy and you're like, you know what, I'm introvert, 
I can run numbers all day, but I just can't talk to brokers. Go find somebody that loves to talk to brokers and that can jabber jaw all day. Let them talk to them. Let them bring you the deal. You run the numbers and, and, and you're good. That's what I was doing with Jonathan. I would go out there and go head hunt for brokers, tour properties, look at the construction stuff and, and take some notes. And then I'd be, all right, John, here, here here's a freaking, here's the OM, here are the financials. Here's a T12, run the numbers, bro. Tell me what you think. Oh man, it's a good deal. Oh, you know what? That's a horrible deal. Tell them we'll make an offer at so-and-so. So that's the power of how we're able to just really collaborate and leverage off each other and people's superpowers and partnership. So vital to have a partner that you really can kind of be their opposite, right? So that you can come together and create a whole. Um, mm -hmm. And now that we're on the topic of your partner, Jonathan, I wanted to ask you about the cat, the cash flow empire show, right? And kind of a teacher. But first, I do want to say congratulations because you guys have one year as of this past Saturday on YouTube. Just Congrats, man. Thank you. you. That's an amazing feat. So congratulations for you know just making it to a year. You know, it's really hard sometimes to be yeah. so consistent. Very hard. Very tough. It's one of the toughest things that we did. But when we started that. You know, it was never supposed to be public, like like we're doing it. It was never supposed to be live. You know, when we started bringing these these very very great speakers to our podcast, we were just kind of sitting like the community, right? Because it started as a as a podcast, but then it started turning into community. But me and John were sitting next to each other on the screen, and I'm hitting this guy under the table, dude. Are you listening to this? This is like gold, right? And we were looking at the end of the call. We're like, dude, we we just we can't do this. We got We got to put this out there to people. So that was really the motivation. And when we when we started, you know, we we had a lot of um, our our goal was let's just stay dedicated. Let's let's consistency. That was the word for the year of 2023. Consistency. I don't care if five people show up. I don't care if three. I don't care if nobody shows up. Post it every single week. We're gonna we're gonna go live at the same time, the same day, no matter what. I think the only day we we only missed two days and it was because one of them was fourth of july um and other than that i mean the, no made we were we were going we've never pushed an episode we've never stopped we made it happen so um that was the point of it is just to really get out there get out there to challenge ourselves to um <laughs> be a cockroach and just show <laughs> yeah yeah mark just like that um he said, be like a cockroach and just show up, just showing up every single day, being consistent, um, showing ourselves that we can do this, um, just trying to build community, just trying to do what you guys are doing is give as much value to everybody as, as much as possible, because it's super important, guys. It's just, y'all don't understand how lucky y'all are to be, be in here. It's just, it's 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 so important. Um, it's, it's great. Y'all to be proud to be here because it's just a lot of value given to you you know, that from people, from people's experiences. So uh, that's essentially what we wanted to do. And it, I mean, it was rough. It's rough. It's not easy. Just trying to plan out. Okay. There goes another week next week. Who, who are you getting next week? Who are we getting next week? You know, it's tough. And what kind of value are we going to try to provide? You know, it can be tough. So. Yeah, no, 100%. And that's, you know, we were, we started off the same way, just doing them just small, small little rooms, but just slowly incrementing. And obviously, with each and every guest that we bring on, we try to bring on people that we connect with personally. And, uh, you know, just from going through uh, to your podcast, I was like, hey, I want to connect with this guy. He's, he seems like a pretty, somebody like I can have a beer with, you know? <laughs> <laughs> For just, sure. But, um, but yeah, just to bring it back to the uh, to the future, you know, Cashflow Empire, what do you guys have lined up for, uh, you know, in the future? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're just, we're, we're, we're just continue trucking, guys. I mean, I mean, we're, at the end of the day, we're all here to just be financially free. We're all here to, to just try to educate as much as we can, right? bring value to as much as we can. I mean, a lot of the multi-millionaire friends that we do have and the mentors, uh, that's all they say. That's all they talk about, you know, is, you know, guys, you know, you guys got to give, y'all got to keep giving, you know, you got to, you got to give to receive, you got to keep bringing value to people. Um, and, and what's, what's in store for us is that just to keep the podcast going, we want to continue to educate everybody uh, every Tuesday night on how is it that we do things right. Uh, we want to continue to close deals. That's why, that's why we're doing it at the end of the day what we're doing. We're trying to 
find deals. We're trying to buy deals. We're trying to be passively free. We're trying to retire. We're trying to quit the, escape the, escape the rat race. Right. So at the end of the day, that's still our goal. We want to do that, you know, and, um, essentially, I mean, we try to teach everybody anything we learn or anything that we're, we're learning and doing at the, like at the moment, we tell everybody this past Tuesday, we had a call about the Phillips we got going on. How are like, that's literally what we're doing at the moment. Let's teach everybody. Let's tell everybody what we're doing. Why not? You know, we want to show everybody what we're doing. Why hide it? You know, it, it would be it would be a lie if I said, yeah, get into multifamily, you know, and you're going to, you know, two extra money or whatever. Uh, but like people are going to be like, well, Serge, I don't have no money. How am I supposed to put $75,000 in? How am I supposed to do 50000 You know, so we talk to everybody on what is it that we do, how to make that active income and then invest it in the multifamily, right? So just Eric and, and Jahair, just to keep, continue educating, keep trying to give value to our people, to our community. Um, try to be in more podcasts like this. This is amazing. I love this. Um, and just everything. Just keep going. Don't change anything. Just keep keep closing deals. Thank you. No, we appreciate that, man. Um, yeah, it's, it's so exciting being able to talk to so many great people and have so many guests come on. Like I, I see you, Mark. I see you with your hand up. So I promise you I will call on you to, to ask a question so soon because I, I appreciate how active everyone is here. Um, but just before we... We go on to the next step where we'll open up the floor to everybody. I do want to ask you, are there any community projects or anything that you're passionate about for your community that you want to share? I did. For sure. For sure. We actually, we, we do, we do a lot. We, um, right off the bat, the first thing that came to my mind, as far as our community projects, uh, we do like to invest a lot in the wheelchair and Brad Simrock's wheelchair foundation. So, um, what they do is, is you basically donate, money for people that do uh, that can't buy wheelchairs in, in Latin America. Uh, one of the, you know, one, one of the, one of the, wheel, I've, do, I've donated a few wheelchairs, but one of the trips were to Oaxaca, Mexico, which I just automatically said, take my money here. Um, and, and they, they, they get together, they round up wheelchairs for the, the people in Mexico or Guatemala or whatever it is. And, um, they start handing them out, hand, handing them out, um, and helping people and build them on site, and it's just amazing. So we do donate wheelchairs. Uh, one of my philanthropies that I do want to do um, is is I eventually, once I become wealthy, is is I want to build schools and and help out in the education system um, in Mexico, just because I am a college graduate. Um, I always hear stories about my parents, you know, and, and Lord knows how far they would have been, how far they would have went if they wouldn't went finish school. My mom doesn't have more than a sixth grade education. My dad doesn't have much more than the first grade education. He dropped out in first grade. How is that possible? I don't know, but he did it. So um, I really want to encourage people to continue to, you know, continue their education. I'm actually, um, at the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm on the road of sponsoring kids where I'm from in Mexico, um, my ranch. So I'm paying their tuition so that they can continue to study. And, and my goal is to eventually keep following up until, until they do get into college. And I mean, I don't know how much college, co college costs out there, but um, hopefully by then I can help out some way, the same you know, kids that I am helping now. But um, that's kind of what I'm doing right now as far as community, very, very big on, on education at school. So that's what I do. We do a lot of fundraisers and help out with the wrestling team. I am a former, um, collegiate wrestler in high school and college. So uh, we do try to help out there too and, and, and give back, you know, to my old high school or to my old college on, on how is it that we can help, you know, fundraise or help them out with trophies, sponsor some kind of way like that. So um, that's kind of what I do on my personal side of things. Um, but as far as Cashflow Empire, we do give vouchers out to our, our communities. So yes. So I do want to open up the floor. I know Mark had a question. So Mark, if you want to mute yourself and come right up, that would be fantastic. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I was actually messing with the reactions thing. I didn't know I put my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, since we're here, what's up, Sergio? It's been a long time, man. Yes, sir. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> Yeah, we're working on our first deal. Um, and what I realized after working on our first deal, raising for our first deal anyways, is that, um, shoot, man, this is a long-term game, you know? And last year, I quit my job. I quit my job at Boeing to pursue real estate 100%. Remember I told you that? Correct. So, correct. Um, so I wanted to ask you, um, 
what is your advice for uh, making some active income uh, for people that you know want to multi uh, invest in multifamily but need to get that active income from you know residential or uh, commercial brokering? You know, because I'm I'm actually taking my test on Monday. Uh, pray for me to pass. But uh, for that active luck. income, so what do you think I should do? So I would for sure just I mean one one of the things and this is what we're trying to just we're trying to we're trying our we're trying our best to help and educate as much as we can on what is it that we're doing right one of the things we do we flip houses in our local market so it goes back down to still having your pool of investors because you got to you got you're always raising right you know maybe yep. some investors don't have 75 but they probably got like 50 or 25 or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be we we help them also still get into single family homes fix and flips with the expertise and the experience that we do have in that um, so that they can double that money or, or make a good one amount of it in six months. Yeah. Boom. Right. Um, capital gains, you throw them in a multifamily. So we kind of create that cycle for people, but um, I would really look into that Mark, just because okay. I don't want to sit here and be that one guy that tells you and that preaches to the choir. Oh yeah. You know, you're going to retire next year doing a, your first deal in multifamily. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah definitely it, it not. It takes yeah. time. It does take time. Is it worth it? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 it takes time. I mean, I'm a part of six deals, you know, and you know, you, the last two are the ones that are really I'm heavily involved. I'm a lead, you know, general partner on. I've raised, you know, me and Jonathan raised over $5 million, right? Yeah. The last year and a half. So um, it's not easy. It's not, it's not easy at all, but absolutely. You know, um, I would really just look into that, Mark. Just look into, uh, you know, just researching a little more on uh, how much money do do people have, uh, what markets are good for possible fix and flips, how you can kind of puzzle your way into there to really okay. just create that cycle for your investor. For sure. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. And that's what we're doing right now. We're, we're, mm -hmm. we're getting them into single family fix and flips if they can. Um, and then we cycle them once they get that capital gain or if they, we keep reinvesting in the capital gain, we get them in a multifamily. And that's the simple formula that we do. And that's the way to do it. I mean, to help these these investors out. Um, and there, there goes a cheat. There goes a nugget for you guys. You know, help them get into single family fix and flips. You know, make that active income now. But guess what? Long term, multifamily, taxes, right? Yeah. So um, that's really the name of the game on how we do it over here. That makes a lot of sense, especially because, you know, you guys also come from, you know, family of immigrants. Same thing with my family of immigrants. A lot of times um, what we're doing, especially with our first investors, is literally just educating them. Right. They have no idea what investing is. Uh, my mom has been doing real estate for 20 years, but she doesn't even know anything about multifamily. So, yeah, that totally makes sense. Now it just clicked in me like we can just yeah. use residential real estate as, um, you know, the catalyst to do multifamily. Correct. Right. Yeah. And, and and if you've been preaching how returns work for mm -hmm. for multifamily, you're talking 68 percent annually, guys. Yeah. You know, imagine, you know, 20 X or whatever multiplier in three to five years. Imagine telling them, OK, you want to make 20, 20 percent in six months. They're going to be like, Mark, what? You know, like, really? Yeah. You know, 15 to 20. They're like, really? So, like, mm -hmm. yeah, man, look, well, I got this place for you. Simple. Awesome. So we've, we've seasoned our investors, like, like you nailed it. We've been educating for three years, our investors, Hey, you know, multifamily, multifamily. Right. And they, that's their expectation. And we hit them with that low ball on single family fix and flips on the advantage of, of how fast we can make some money. Boom. They're like, I'm in not oh, only yeah. that, but they trust us. I mean, they know us. They've invested with us before they've been, you know, watching our every move for all these months, which is why these rooms are important. You know, you become credible. So shout out to Eric and Yahida because this is important. And uh, the other two, where'd where you go? Kevin, you know, and everybody on the whole squad, right? This is very, very important. You know, you become credible doing these things. People showing up every every uh, every Wednesday, right? You become credible. And that's, I mean, it's all about reputation, right? So. Absolutely. I have one more follow-up question. Um, so you, because you do your fix and flips all based in uh, Dallas where you're at, right? Correct. Um, and I, I'm, I think Jimmy mentioned to me, to me about how you guys are a little bit are doing it since we are here in Washington, is there a way for us to be able to do that too? the fix and flip strategy that you guys are doing? Correct. Correct. So you, you can, I mean, where in your city or, or in Dallas? Or yeah. Where? I mean, in our backyard, right. Cause you know, I'm trying to generate some income here. As yeah. long as 
I'm going to tell you what we tell. I mean, and, and, and it's just a simple, straightforward answer. If the numbers make sense, you can do it. Okay. Got That's it. what we, as long as the numbers make sense, it don't matter if you're in Seattle. It don't matter if you're anywhere. You know, if the numbers make sense, we're buying it. That's what they tell it. I got realtors that call me. Serge, I got, you know, over here in Dallas, there's a neighborhood called Oak Cliff. And it's the hood, you know, is you know, it's not really known to be such a nice area. But they're like, hey, would you buy an Oak Cliff? Like, yeah. Well, what's the number? You know, am I gonna buy a twenty-five thousand <laughs> right. dollar property where the ARV is two hundred? Let's go. I mean, mm. I mean, let's go. You know, as long as the numbers make sense, I don't care where it's at. So thousand percent mark. All right, I got you, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. That was absolutely so much good information shared. <laughs> like, I don't Thank know if you. anyone else heard what I heard, but that was like mind blowing to me because you really have kind of nailed it, right? You, you start out with maybe a new investor, something small, and you're carrying them over and educating as you go into multi family. That's right. amazing. That's yeah. really good. Um, That's so, good. again, guys, I've opened up the floor. I know I think there's a couple of people that have some questions before. So please, if you want, you can unmute and jump right in. Or if you're more comfortable raising your hand and then me calling you out, that works. Hey, but, hey Wendy. Hi, team. Um, hi, Sergio, again. Um, hey, I'm intrigued by what I just heard. Um, and I apologize beforehand for the background noise. I'm like cooking dinner. I have kids screaming in the back. Um, but in regards to, I know, um, I know you're a, a, a guy that likes to diversify your investments. Um, so how do you structure the, um, the single family deals um, as far as funding goes? Do you raise all the money and, or do you, do you stick with like hard money loans or do you typically just raise everything from your investors? So that's a very great question. And that's what I love about real estate. You can kind of do a little bit of everything. I'm going to give you a, 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 a I'm going to give you a, a really great example that we just did right now. So I just found a property that was going into foreclosure. We got it for 135,000, right? Um, that property is worth 275 in the Dallas market. The average Time frame that it's in the market in that area is 24 days. So we're confident we're going to shoot for 290. But I mean, we got some wiggle room, right? But, but the point is, is that on that property, I was able to find an investor that went all in cash. They paid the 135 and they're also paying the, the rehab, which is 80,000. They were in, they like the numbers. On something like that, they came all in with that money. Now, we may not have the, the type of investor to come in like that, but in this case, I, we have an investor that came in with all that money, cash, and in that sense, we did a 60-40 split. So, I mean, because I'm, we're doing, uh, I mean, 70-30. Because we're, we found the property for them, we're going to manage it for them. I mean, we're making a 70-30 a, a profit split. And, I mean, I'm projected to make $20,000. And I mean, I'm not going to work that hard, honestly. I'm going to manage the cruise, but we're going to make twenty thousand, twenty five thousand dollars in, you know, six months, and that's essentially how the partnership works. If they're coming in um, with all the money down, and we have a lot of people that have all the money down, because uh, they're they're already calling us, hey, when's the next one? When's the next one? I want in. When's the next opportunity? So, the way it's looking, we're not hard. We're we're kind of hard money in it in the way they are the hard money loan, but we're not going through a hard money company. Although we do know a couple of hard money loan companies. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Because um, I actually have done a couple of fix and flips. I might have mentioned this year. I can't remember. Um, but it's all about like just different strategies. Like that's the wonderful thing about real estate, um, especially with investors who don't have the ability ability, like you said, to invest uh, fully into a multifamily deal, um, just to get them to that point. A lot of them feel comfortable with like a return in six or, you know, 12 months. Um, it's incredible. What was that return you said you offered to your investors with single family right now? So right now, we because we do manage a really fund, we're, we're, we're offering uh, 15, 20% in a year. 
So I've had a lot of people just jump into that minimum twenty five thousand dollar investment. Um, yeah. And, and you know, they're it's they're jump they jumped in. I had like I mean, in one day I probably raised like a hundred. Uh, when I talked to people and they were like, "Dude, this is it," and a lot of them are actually about to start pulling out. Um, right. Here in the next couple months, I think in three or four months, I had. It's funny that we're talking about this because I had two conversations with two investors today, and they were asking about it. I said, "Yeah, we're coming to that year." Uh, some of them want to stay in it. The others want to pull. All right, cool. Whatever you right. want. Yeah, and um, I agree. People like to stay close to their money. And once you get that trust, the perfect way to leverage them to come into bigger, bigger deals. Once you get them all warmed up and and get their trust, and they yeah. see your work. <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we, we do we do twenty percent. Um, I'm never gonna lie to you. We always say concern five fifteen to twenty. Now we give them twenty percent. So it's awesome. almost because awesome. it is because it is a fund. Um, yeah. we're distributed in all these houses that we got going on, all the flips that we got going on. So I mean, it's it's twenty percent. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's great. Thank you. I'm gonna have to reach out to you um, later on to to discuss this. <laughs> yeah, um, let's do it. You got my number. So. Yeah, I do. Hey, on another note, um, how important is it to show up on social media? I've seen you coming up with videos now cooking and it just shows your like authenticity and like yeah. um it just I don't know it just it really did inspire me to like start getting a little bit more creative um and just sharing a lot more on social media right. and leveraging the platform so that people can actually get to know hey we're all like at the end of the day we all come home and like we cook <laughs> yeah yeah I think you nailed yeah. it because you said, you know, it shows my authenticity. People, I, I want people, like people invest into you for who you are. They invest into Eric because they see Eric, you know, he, you know, he's tatted up or whatever the case may be, or, you know, and, and that's who they, who you see is what you get. And that's the persona that I am. I mean, I cuss a lot. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't cussed a lot on this show today, but I curse a lot in person. My partners know that they still respect me because at the end of the day, they know I mean no disrespect. Um, I did. We had a conference last November, and my partner did say, "Hey, hey, Serge," and she's very, very. Uh, she's like, "Hey, Serge, uh, can we try not to do no f bombs?" I was like, "I got you, girl." <laughs> so that that's how I think authentic I am, though. Like they 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 love me still, but to answer your question, Wendy, it, it shows people we live in the twenty first century, guys where there's a lot of money out there. There's a lot of people on social media. There's people on Facebook. They, and if you're raising for your deal, they need to know who Cedric is. They need, they need to know who Yahaira is, Nathan. They got to know what is it that y'all do other than real estate. Okay, yeah, I know Nathan from the real estate club in New York, or I don't know, KY, is that Connecticut? Uh, Kent, uh, Kentucky. Kentucky, God, I'm sorry, bro, I'm from Texas. <laughs> I don't know anything up north. But, but, uh, you know, you know, they, 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 you know, they see me as this real estate dude, but I got to know more than Nathan than, than what there is. What is Nathan like? Yeah. He's posting all these multifamily syndication stuff, all this crap to invest with him. But who is Nathan? What does he like to do in his free time? You know, I like to cook. I gym a lot and I cook a lot and I read a lot. That's what I do. What do I post? I'm reading this chapter of the book. I'm at the gym doing workout. I'm meal prepping. They see my authentic side. I also like to hunt. You know, a lot of people don't like people that hunt, but here and there, when I do go on trips, I post more of my catches. But it's different. They like to see different. They like to see who is this guy that I'm investing in? Or who is this guy? Well, I know Sergio likes to hunt. He likes to lift weights. There's people that I meet at conferences that I that I kind of reconnect with that haven't invested with me yet, but they're like, yeah, you know, I've been watching you lifting all this heavy weight. And, and it's funny, right? I'm like, and I just start laughing because they don't even know how much I'm lifting. Yeah, all this heavy weight. And, but that's how they know me, right? They want to come up to Cedric and be like, you know what? Cedric's the family man that likes to go out there with his kids or, you know, whatever the case may be. They like to go every weekend here or there. They can relate to you now. So um, very, very important to market yourself that way too, guys. Um, and I actually started a, a personal business Instagram. But guess what, guys? I didn't feel good. I was like, man, it's just not me. I was like, this is not me. I'm posting all these events and I'm managing this page, but it's just not me. I got rid of it. I was like, you know what? Screw it. 
I, I, I tossed it and I just started posting on my active Instagram. And if you go to my Instagram, if you go far enough, you're going to see all the partying I used to do back in the day before the real estate. You, you'll find some dirt on me. I, trust me. Some of the stupid things that I've said that I posted, you'll find some dirt. And I mean, I'm not here to hide it. It is what it is. I mean, that's, that's just me. You know, that's who I was. And what you see is what you get. That's my philosophy. So, Wendy, that was a very, very great question. And uh, be yourself, guys. Don't get caught up in this whole Mr. Sue, Miss, you know, real estate, da, 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 da. Guys, get out there. Let people yeah. give someone to relate to you aside from the real estate. Be your authentic self. That's fantastic. Thank you for that. Cedric, you can go ahead and unmute and ask your question. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sergio, for uh, all the uh, great information you put out. And I'll, uh, one thing that I will say, and I really appreciate it, you just bringing that up is about basically being your authentic self. People want to see, you know, you, the person. I mean, like for me, you know, I'm on social media and I'm doing all the everything, you know, real estate, real estate, real estate. But I'll, I always forget that piece of it they want to see you outside of always talking about real estate and things like that. And, and again, I appreciate you for really bringing that back to my forefront, but, um, so the, the fund that you have, is it, um, a debt fund? Um, it's basically, it's basically like, uh, so, so remember, I'm not the numbers guy Jonathan is, but, but it is, it is a fund that we created. Uh, I mean, I, I would say it is like a debt fund where we, I mean, we, we just, we, we have our LLC. I mean, it's, it's a fund that's holding all this money and then we just, we find a uh, foreclosed property. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we attack it, but we've been doing this Cedric for over talking about leverage and the partnerships. Like I said earlier, our partner, Tommy Jones, uh, we're partnered up with him on this project and he's been doing this for over 30 years. He's actually a loan officer. So, um, the credibility that we have on executing our business plan on how we're so successful on these flips, the community uh, that we have doing this. And this is actually what I love about this fund is that, you know, in this community, it is the black and brown community that we, we, we are educating that and that we're coming from. Um, so we are the wealth of real estate when it comes down to that fund and how we're managing um, and, and just basically taking down these assets. Okay. Uh, uh, two part question. One, because of uh, like how many deals are you guys doing? Because I, I what I'm hearing is that the fund is primarily right now focused on flipping. And then like how many deals are you guys doing in a year on average? And then how are you guys positioning yourself with those investors to do a longer term investment, say, like in a syndication coming on as an LP? So to answer your question on, because we just launched this project, the, the partnership just got launched about a year ago. Um, so we've, we, we currently at the moment, it's only, it's only, it's not even Q1 yet. Oh, Q1 ain't over. We have 11 flips going on right now. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we will do well over, I'm going to say we're going to hit over 50 for sure. Cause I'm already working on three more that we're look, looking to lock in, you know, and that's just me. That's not the community itself. Um, so I, I can't give you a hard number on how many flips we do. I, man, it, it could, it's a lot, Cedric. It, it's a lot that we're turning over, turning around, turning around and we're buying them. We're buying them, right? Our philosophy is buying them right in the front. Um, and I don't mean to kind of beat around a question, but, but I, I'm, I'm, I, what I can say is that we're at 11 right now going on at the same time and counting because there's more just coming in every week by week basis. I mean, in our community, we already had three people get uh, properties that we're going to we're going to continue to flip uh, within our community through through the wealth of real estate. So it, I just can't lie to you and be like, you know what, we average uh, 50 right now because we're we're on the way to do way more than 50, maybe even more than 100. I know we're going to probably hit well over 100 this year alone. Uh, just because on how fast we're scaling, how we're getting these properties. So, uh, you know, stopping them from going into foreclosure. Mm -hmm. But going back to your second question on the syndication, you know, it's easier to talk to people. I started backwards. I started educating people on syndications, the, the, the bigger side of things, right? And then I reversed into it. So a lot of my 
investors are seasoned and they know how is it that syndications work. So when I pitch the, the flip, they're like, dude, no brainer because I need more money. I don't already put a hundred thousand or 50,000 in syndication. I only got a hundred thousand dollars left. Like I'm going to run out of money. Okay. Well, let's put you in the fix, fix and flip. Let's get you in the fix and flip. Let's put you in the fund and make some more money so that whenever you do make that money, we can throw you in the multifamily because they already know the multifamily. So it's just cycling them back around education. It goes back to educating them. Cedric, Hey, look, short-term play, long-term play, midterm play. This is a six month play. So, so it just it really, it's really just, it goes back to opportunity and education. And I'm fortunate enough to be in Dallas in the hot market where we're stopping foreclosures, you know, houses from going into foreclosures. We're buying them for pennies on the dollar. We're also helping families out because we're putting money in their pocket, but we're actually buying them very cheap. Those are the properties that we're buying with the fund for $120,000, 110,000, maybe even cheaper. And then called an investor. I got this property. Do you want it? Yeah, I want that property. The numbers look great. I trust you because of your expertise, your construction experience. You got the crews going. You're partnered up with Tommy Jones, who's been doing this for 30 years. Let's go. Here's my money. Boom, we go. Now they got all, they got a fifty sixty thousand dollar capital gain. They make fifty sixty thousand. Now they got the money. Guess what? Now I got a syndication for you. Sixty thousand. Roll it into the freaking. What's the minimum? Fifty thousand, right? Yeah. There you go. Now you ain't got to pay no taxes. You take it, take advantage of the depreciation. So we're solving. We're helping them create more money, but we got a, we got a solution for them. We invested in the multifamily, so that you don't pay all them taxes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Disclaimer, by the way, this is just experience what we're doing. You know, consult with your CPAs, your your, your attorneys. Uh, this is just the way we operate over here in, in Dallas, how we got our operations going with the single family fix and flip fund and with the multifamily. We just tie them together, man. And it's all about education. It's all about telling, you, you know, obviously, you know, I was talking to my boy today from from Charlotte. And he was like, hey, bro, nah, bro, you know what, well, fam, I trust you. You got to flip, hit me up. And he's already invested with us on Casa San Luis, you know, and, and it's just all relationship. He's like, man, well, what's up? Let me know. He's like, I got the money. You know, I'm, I'm about to pull some equity, line of equity. Like, what do I got to do? I'm like, I got you. Let me just find another house for you. That's it. <laughs> and it's a process that you can rinse and repeat, too. That's what I like wherever you are in the in the States. I know. Uh, Mark mentioned where he is and in investing in his backyard. You can rinse and repeat the same exact way, man. So thank you for sharing that your process out here. Yeah, Mark can raise a million in Seattle and come to be like, and, and he can come to Dallas and be like, Serge, I got I got a million dollars that I want to put. Like, where can we distribute this in the single family fix and flips? And we we work that out. We can do that. Not a problem. We partner up with people like that. That's what we do. You know, it's collaborating. It's like using your resources. Once I've said that like four or five times again today like it's all about partnership guys it's all about collaborating again we've 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 partnered up with other capital raisers no doubt say like, hey i need an opportunity i want y'all want to partner up on this let's go it's not a problem at all thank you so That's much my one last question that i'd love to ask and i have to ask even though i know we're going beyond our time um but it is how has multi-family investment changed your life it changed my life um let me, let me just put it this way, and I'm going to try to keep it short because I know it's something I probably got to go. Um, I didn't think I could do this. I At the end of the day, I got in this game because I wanted to buy my own 30, 40 unit apartment complex for my family, for my generational wealth. I don't have any kids yet or anything or, or anything like that. But but, but I, I that's all I can think about is what am I going to leave behind? What legacy am I going to leave behind to my kids, to my family? Um, so that they, God forbid, something happened to me, they're taken care of, right? Um, at the end of the day, that's why I got in the multifamily and because I wanted to buy 30, 40 units to myself. Now I'm getting to that point because I built a relationship. I built a team. I built relationships for the last three years in this game. I've raised a lot of money. So that makes me credible. My, my net worth will be growing soon where I'm able to do this by myself. But it's... It's able to really just help me out and 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 just I just know that it's possible to do. 
And and I've, I'm I'm glad that I'm able to kind of be the middleman right now and be like, hey guys, y'all can do it too. To all my people, to all our investors, hey, educate them, get them in deals, two extra money, right? So, um, it's really just taught me that this is possible. You know, this isn't you know anybody can do this. It don't matter what color skin you are, uh, what age you are. I always tell people age don't even matter because I, I've done a lot in three years, and the age does not matter. You just get after it. But two, three years solid, you know, it's going to pay off in the fifth year. So age does not matter and color does not matter. You can do this. And, and that's what really multifamily has taught me is that you can really do this. It don't matter. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sergio, for your time again. We appreciate you being here, just sharing. Not a problem. Yeah, my pleasure. The pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me. I'm sure we'll have you come back. Yeah, just let me know. I'm down. I'm down for whatever. Um, I'm just just let me know. Uh, I love the way I run y'all ship. Y'all are very professional. Um, I love the emails that y'all sent. Super, super professional and very, very just I love it. So y'all keep it up, guys. I love what y'all are doing. Keep it up. Trust me. It's it's worth it. Um, I'm I'm proud of y'all. Just keep it up, guys. Keep getting out there on social media. Thank so, you. Thank you.